When I was a kid, my passion was volleyball. I was dreaming of winning the Olympics for my home country of France, and I was training hard to get there. At the time, my personal hero was my volleyball coach. He was cool, he was sporty, he was a great coach, great player, overall an awesome guy. My teammates and I, we simply adored him. And then one night, he didn't show up for practice. And we knew something had to be wrong for him, not only not to show up, but also not to call ahead. And we only learned the dreadful news at the following practice. He'd been hit by a car, and he passed away. And I clearly remember thinking at the time, how unfair is this? It was a perfect day, perfect driving conditions. The driver of that car was not drunk, not speeding, in perfect control of his vehicles. He simply was human for a split second. He simply failed to pay attention for a split second. And as a consequence, somebody died. Now fast forward 30 years, 30 something years. The massacre on our roads continues today. There is a bloodbath going on out there. Every single day, somewhere on this planet, as many as 3,000 people will lose their life in a car crash. Every single day, that is the equivalent of eight Boeing 777 airliners completely full, crashing down to the ground with not one single survivor, day after day after day. And that's not even mentioning the millions of lives that are destroyed because of a car crash, how many families shattered, how many people who will have their life destroyed because of a handicap. Fortunately, in the past few years, we have started talking seriously about a technology that has the potential to change life as we know it, but beyond the potential to save a lot of people, save lives. I am talking about autonomous driving. We've all seen the pictures. They are pretty much the same since the topic entered popular imagery in the 50s. Comfortable people being carried away blissfully in futuristic looking vehicles. Are they still called cars? I don't know. But they really enjoy life to the fullest on those pictures. No more congestion, no more car crashes, no more hassle. And all experts agree, there is no way to understand the magnitude of this technological revolution that's coming. By year 2026 already, this industry is expected to be worth $600 billion, but that's only the beginning. Our entire notion of space and time will change. Entire businesses will be turned upside down. The whole concept of city real estate will have to be reinvented with us in the center instead of cars. But far more important than profits and comfort, this technology also has the potential to save lives. Many, many lives. Up to 3,000 lives every single day. Why? Simply because when you put a computer at the wheel, you can expect it to make far less mistakes than a human being. The precise number depends on the source, but it is estimated that about 90% of car crashes today are due to a human error. And I'm pretty sure, personally, that out of the remaining 10%, a good share of those are due to an external event, but to a human being underreacting to that event. So, theoretically, we know how to put an end to all of those road casualties. So what are we waiting for? Let's put those babies on the road. Well, unfortunately, we're waiting for those babies to get the driver's license. I am pretty sure most of you consider yourselves very capable drivers, and I'm I could bet that some of you actually are, some. But think about it for a second. Driving is actually one of the most cognitive tasks we ever get to perform. Using a very complex set of psychomotor skills, we have to operate a two-ton moving metal box while analyzing at 360 degrees the relative trajectory and speed of a number of moving objects, all the while adhering to a set of rules that are given to us in the shape of pictograms, and abstract pictures. I mean, this is really complex stuff when you think about it. So by the way, the next time some idiot cuts you off on the road, remember, he's probably just struggling with that complexity. <laughs> but seriously, I mean, it, it took us millions of years to be able to handle the chaos of the real world. So it's only fair that we give computers at least a few years to get there. So the next time you hear some industry player making some ludicrous claim about the rise of self-driving cars with some totally unrealistic deadline. Look carefully, read the small print, ask yourself who is speaking and why. Because the reality, 
this technology will take time. The reality? Climbing this automation ladder will be a long, painful, complex, and probably tremendously expensive journey. The Society of Automotive Engineers recognizes six levels for vehicle automation today. From level zero, which is a car that is fully manual, to level five, which is a car that has no steering wheel and no pedal. Today, the most advanced automated cars on the market out there are considered level two or level two plus. And of course, we can, we've all seen cars doing some self-driving tricks. Some of them can parallel park themselves. You can even keep a stable distance with a car preceding you on the highway. That's called adaptive cruise control. And combined with lane assist, these are basically the first baby steps towards autonomous driving. But the real deal, that level five car without a steering wheel and without pedals, will take time to materialize. And even if we can expect to see some pieces of that technology in some parts of the world under some very specific condition relatively soon, we can only call it a victory when this technology is available the same way in London, New York, Amsterdam, like it would be in Mumbai, Lagos, or Jakarta for any kind of road, any kind of trip, any kind of condition. And what separates us from this reality is an ocean of R&D, testing, and scaling up. This technology will not happen in test tubes. We have to see in the real world how those increasingly automated vehicles handle the increasingly complex driving situation, from good visibility to poor visibility, from highway driving to urban driving, from partial automation to full automation. And there, unfortunately, things are about to go wrong. Actually, that's even the whole point of testing when you think about it, to check when system starts failing. And if you read the, pre the press recently, you've seen that we started witnessing the first incidents and even the first fatal accidents involving the testing of self-driving cars. So isn't that ironic? The very same technology that can and will save a number of lives might take a few in the process. So if you turn it in a bit more cynical way, is this another case of in order to make an omelette, you need to break a few eggs? In my opinion, it's actually the opposite. Someone losing their life is never, ever justifiable. It is, however, sometimes, sadly, unavoidable. Haven't we been there before? I believe there's another industry where the the, 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 whose products are designed to cure, but where the testing of those products might actually severely injure or even kill the people they're trying to help. And that industry also needs their product to be tested in the real life on real people. And that's the pharmaceutical industry. And I believe we can learn something in the way we manage the risk associated with testing new medicines. Whatever the region of the world, new medicines are only authorized on the market after an extremely thorough testing which has been formalized in a very rigid, very comprehensive framework that every each pharmaceutical company has to adhere to. This company have to publish the result of their testing and let it be reviewed by a committee of independent experts who represent the civil society. And that very rigid framework is not a guarantee against failure. It is, however, a guarantee that we will have done everything possible to protect the life of the people. But now, let's, let's play for a second. Let's imagine that we've done a good job during all of that testing phase, right? And self-driving cars are here, they're available, they're out there. Unfortunately, things are bound to go wrong again. And that is because we still have not invented the machine that doesn't break down. Given enough time, enough occurrences, every each machine will end up breaking down. So what can we do about it? I think we can learn from another industry that had to deal with very spectacular catastrophic failures over the past 100 plus years and still managed to get a reputation for safety. That is the aviation industry. And first, somewhat similarly to the pharmaceutical industry, continuous testing is hardwired into everything that they do, from the flying crew all the way to every single piece of gear that makes those planes fly. Everything has been thoroughly and continuously tested. But beyond, I think it is in the way the aviation industry manages the cat catastrophic failures that we should replicate. 
It starts with the black box. This is basically undestructible record of the flight, which provides a very factual baseline for investigators to start their inquiries. Those investigators are assembled in a team of experts. They're often former aviation professionals themselves with a proven track record. And after they've analyzed the root cause of the crash and hopefully find it, there is this very complete review of all of the rules and regulations governing civil and commercial aviation to see if anything should be improved. Should we uh, extend the training of that pilot? Should we update the maintenance schedule of this part? But there's something even more fundamental that the aviation industry has given us, and that is a culture of safety. And this is where there's a big difference with the autonomous driving industry, which has to do with who's driving the innovation. Today, an automated vehicle has more in common with a computer than an actual car. So today, it is the Silicon Valley that is at the wheel, so to say. And the Silicon Valley does not have a culture of safety. Instead, the Silicon Valley lives by the motto, fail fast, learn, improve. That's totally fine when you create an e-commerce website or a social media application or an online game and where the failure of the application means you might have to restart your mobile device. But that is not fine at all, at all when the failure of the application means you're going to lose control over a two-ton moving object that might kill you or me in the process. Additionally, these companies do not have a good track record when it comes to sharing information. How can we learn from each other's mistakes with such a level of secrecy? How can we improve? We all saw it recently in the news. The Silicon Valley doesn't like when other people are checking their algorithms. And that is precisely my point. We as human beings whose life can be saved or taken by this technology, we have to take back control. We have to make sure these companies have the right priorities with our safety coming right at the top. We, the civil society, through a system of checks, reviews and authorizations, we have to make sure that the amazing benefits of autonomous driving come to us as fast as possible but also as safely as possible. And I believe we may have to force this safety culture in. But I also believe the memory of my coach deserves just that. Thank you.